It's football Friday. So let's bring in Jim Barker from the CFL on TSN panel. I'm very anxious to get his analysis of first, the Elks first win, Jim, 24-10 at Hamilton. Did you feel early on that it was going to play out that way even before the storm hit? Uh, you know, I, I just kept feeling like Hamilton would eventually do something, but the quarterback just you know, he wasn't wasn't good enough, and uh, he hasn't done anything to show. He's I think he's thrown maybe one touchdown pass, and uh, again, they didn't do anything. They didn't stretch the field. They didn't do anything to try to, you know, to help that kid maybe get a big play. Uh, Edmonton did a nice job. They just sat back and allowed them to complete the ball, two balls, three balls. But they eventually were going to be in second and five, and the kid was going to not be able to execute it. And, and uh, you know, it, it was a smart game plan by Chris uh, defensively against Scott, and they're very close friends. Uh, so I thought he did that was a good thing. On the other hand, Hamilton just kept blitzing and putting their guys in, in – coverage issues i felt and uh and gave them a few too many easy ones and trey ford took advantage and trey ford played phenomenal i will i will say he had those two balls that should have been caught uh the deep balls and he'd have had a heck of a night statistically so uh kudos to trey ford for uh for doing some great things again i think what hamilton did defensively helped him uh but you know, it was just such a disappointing game from Hamilton. And then when you throw the 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 the, the, the rain delay in, it just it made it for a long night. <laughs> a very long night. Uh, kudos to all of you for hanging in to the end, but particularly the Elks. I mean, I felt like the whole country was cheering for them. Just to pause on that, Rich in Edmonton says, Jim, would you accept the GM position of the Elks and keep Chris Jones as head coach? I think that would be a fantastic combo. I'm just passing it along. How would you answer that? Oh, uh, you know, it. I'll, I'll answer it this way. If I was the GM or the president of any organization, Chris Jones would be one of the guys I would look to hire as the head coach. He and I have won three great cups together. Everywhere I go, I try to bring him. Uh, I think he's a fantastic football coach. Uh, I do think he has a bit too much on his plate at this point. And, uh, but uh, again, that's the, that those are things that are all speculation type thing. And, but I will say that if I was a, if I was in that position, it doesn't matter where I would be at. If Chris Jones was available, he would be a guy that I would have a huge interest in. Thank you for the answer. How much does Drew Brown replacing Zach Caleros for Winnipeg tonight in Calgary change the complexion of the game? Uh, yeah, obviously it changes the complexion of the game. But uh, to be honest with you, I think like, this is a great thing for Winnipeg, that they get a chance to see what Drew Brown is. It's a lot different. When you come into a game and you're down 22 to nothing and you can just wing it, that that's that's different than what's happening now. Now Calgary is going to prepare for him. Brett Monson is one of the better defensive coordinators in the league. He's had a week to prepare for Drew Brown, and uh, I believe that's what they've done. They've so he's going to have a game plan devised against him, not against Zach. And uh, uh, I think it's going to be a very big ball game for Winnipeg because Winnipeg is about winning the Grey Cup. That's, that's, and every team is, but the, this team really is. They've been there three straight years. They, uh, again, I lost last year, but this is about winning the, that. They need to have a quarterback that's, that if, it doesn't matter who it is. I remember last year in the, in the Grey Cup game, there was question whether Zach would play or not. And if Zach wouldn't have played, I don't think the confidence level on the Winnipeg side was going to be enough. Uh, for Drew Brown. Drew Brown can build that now. Uh, I think based on his body of work last year, I didn't think he was a guy that was, you know, that you could say he could start the Grey Cup game and win. After the way he played the other day, if he can continue that this week, and that's why I think this week is such a big game because he's the starter. He's playing a good Calgary team, not a great Calgary team, but a good Calgary team. And 
if he can come out and perform at the same level, make the same kinds of big throws and and do the things that he did last week, then that gives that whole organization a whole different view of what's happening with them in terms of their Grey Cup uh, you know, aspirations. And, and it goes a long way to helping that thing along. So I think this is a huge game tonight for Drew Brown uh, and for that organization because if he goes out and lays an egg, now where are they? If Zach's not there, they get into that game. So this is a this is a huge game tonight. Can't wait. And they're saying rain. Uh, I hope that that is wrong. Uh, Jim, you spent so many great years as in long Calgary. As there's no light. You would no lightning. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. You at least. I love now that I can leave. I can go. <laughs> you guys couldn't. Hey. You'd have loved the chat at the Winston Golf Club here in Calgary yesterday at Theron Fleury's Golf Classic because we were talking about the Stampeders and the Rough Riders, and they were saying, Dave Dickinson, Craig Dickinson, do they both last to Labor Day? Do neither last for Labor Day? Does one get fired before Labor Day? A lot of heat on Calgary and Sask right now, Jim. Well, I think probably more so on Craig and Saskatchewan. I don't think Dave is in any trouble. Uh Again, first year he's taken on head coach and GM, and uh, you don't know until you've done it. And I think that, you know, that it's a lot, and that changes the dynamics of everything in your locker room when you're not only the head coach, but you're the GM. Those are things that Dave wouldn't know. He just didn't know. And uh, it's gonna, they're going to give him time to make adjustments and, and get that right. On the other hand, with Craig, I just think that, the the fan base there, you know, you shoot, you know better than anybody, Rod, what that's like, and the patience is not deep there. And uh, again, they're they're in a situation where they're playing with uh, Jake Dolagala, and uh, you know, can they beat BC? I, I think they can because they're good on defense. If they can get some turnovers and. And then hope that VA has a you know a Toronto like game where he threw six or seven six interceptions and you know if they if they can do something like that they'll have a chance but this is a really tall order because I just I'm not a big fan of Jake Dol- Dolagala I look at the at the CFL and try to think of the quarterbacks that have been successful that are six four and and up and he's six seven now not that that's the be all end all but. It's, it's harder to protect with a bigger quarterback like that because he's going to be in one spot. He's, he's not the, a guy who's going to run a lot. Uh, you know, I can guarantee you that defensive line of BC is licking their chops getting ready for it. So, uh, again, I think Dave, and I think he makes it to, to Labor Day. I think it's, you know, it's easy to say, well, we just need to make a change. And I don't think that makes them any better. And I don't think, you know, if they draw an extra, what, 200 fans because they fire Dave Dick- or Craig Dickinson, uh, I don't see that as being a, the mot- a motivation. I think he'll give him through the year. But um, the one who's in the most danger right now is definitely Craig. Yeah. Well, you say a big game for Winnipeg tonight, but how oh, huge game for Calgary too, man. You, that's what's great about these interviews, man. It's firing us up. Everybody's going to be tuned in to TSN tonight that isn't here in Calgary. But you've been in these gatherings, Jim, these Calgary oil man gatherings. Oh, yeah. The guy, you know, they, they stand in a circle. And this guy's like, Dave Snow Huff. What did Huff escape at the right time? He just, he's the legendary Huff. And then Dave's got to replace him. I don't think people thought about that. They're saying he's no Huff. Well, I mean, there's only one Huff. And, you know, he came in my third year uh, was when he came. So uh, our fourth year, actually, it was at the end of the third year when we hired him. And, uh, uh, you know, he was he just has a magic about him uh, that, you know, I, I. I, I worked around Don Matthews, who was the best I've ever been around in terms of that that magic. And Huff had that. I mean, we we got it turned around and started to win games in those first three years. But it was when we brought him in that, uh, you know, it went over the top and we won the Grey Cup that first year in 2008. So uh, Huff is a, he's just a solid guy who he has an intimidation about him, very similar to Don Matthews. 
Um, in terms of just when he walks in the room, you know who he is. You know he doesn't have to say a word. Uh, <laughs> but he was probably the closest guy that I've been around in the league like Don Matthews and just kind of that air about him. And, no, Dave's never going to be that. Dave is always going to be, you know, and, again, this is uh, for him, he was a player there. I mean, we brought him in as a player there toward the end of his career, and and he was a player that's evolved into, you know, being an assistant coach. He learned from Huff. But, again, it's just like me. I learned from Don Matthews, but I'm never going to be Don Matthews, no matter how what? much I would have loved to do it. And I tried to use a lot of his thing, but I'm not Don Matthews. I, I don't It's cool you that say that. Story. Yeah, it's What's cool that? you say that. And Dickey is Dickey is his own guy. And I love him. I love Dave Dickinson and we're talking about. Yeah, and, and I love Craig, right. too. I don't like talking about the heat on them. But you know what? You signed up to coach pro football. This goes with it, boys. So this now, listen, true. Jim, I really enjoy you on CFL and TSN panel. I'm not just buttering you up. I watch all the time. And you said Montreal at Ottawa. It don't matter who the quarterback is. Cody Fajardo, Caleb Evans, they're like the same guy. Do you really believe that? Oh, well, obviously, Cody's Cody's. But I'm just sick of the games that they play. You know, there's some teams that just play games, and I think they play games. They knew last week. Ento comes on at halftime and says, "We knew all week he wasn't going to play." Yet they can't tell us so that we go in and can be prepared and do a proper pregame show. But so I'm just I'm tired of that part of it. Of of, you know, if they play Cody, great. If they play Caleb Evans, great. I mean, Caleb Evans, he can run the run a little bit. I don't think it's going to change your offense a, a large amount. And, uh, again, if they want to play that game, they can play that game. But to me, it doesn't matter. I still think that Montreal is a good football team with either one playing. And, uh, you know, their their team is not center. It's not center uh, quarterback-based. It's based around their ability to run the ball and a lot of the formations that Jason Moss uses. He does more with formations than anybody else in the league at this point. I think you'll see Hamilton doing more of that. But that creates problems for defenses. And then they're playing it on defense. They're, uh, Davis Sanchez talked about it last night. They're playing with such a verve and just a, an excitement. And I, you know, I felt like when Sean Lemon got there, that kind of gave their whole team a, um, a revitalization and guys around him started making plays that maybe they didn't make earlier. So, uh, again, they have a nice blend right now. And on defense, they fly around. They're not afraid to make plays. Um, they're, they're a fun team to watch. And Ottawa's just... You know, they've got this young quarterback who's – I thought Ottawa played as well as they could play against Toronto last week. And, you know, they just weren't good enough. But they played very, very well. And that quarterback threw for 300 yards, didn't throw any interceptions. So he's an interesting guy, but are they good enough to be able to beat a Montreal? I think Montreal is on the cusp of being in the top four with, uh, with Toronto – Winnipeg and BC. I think they're right on that swing line as to whether they're in that group or they go to, go down to the you know with Saskatchewan and and the other the other teams that are there now. Edmonton's a, a got a win. They move that them into that group. So uh, I think I think Montreal is very borderline in that in that situation. So I think this is a a really intriguing game because of that. But in terms of who the quarter, I'm not. I, I'm sick of trying to figure it out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's not going to change <laughs> one bit what Montreal is going to do. It's interesting that you say that. You bring up Sean Lemon's name. He's another good friend of mine, and Sean gets to Montreal and has to explain the rumors are wrong. He's a good guy, and it's – I don't know where these rumors come from. People are writing in about Don Matthews saying uh, what a jerk he is. I'm like, did you know him? He wasn't a jerk. These are all my friends, Chris Jones. Maybe that says something <laughs> about me and you, Jim. That's <laughs> that we, true, Rob. That we I like all these jerks. With a, with a motley lot, that's for sure. So, yeah, again, Don, Matthews <laughs> exactly. was, Don Matthews was misunderstood, I think. By, uh, he had a persona he wanted, the, he wanted people to see, and then he had who he truly was. And uh, those of us that knew him well, uh, like I say, I was never around a better football coach than Don Matthews. Hey. 
and I'll say it now, he won't mind. I've realized now why he always had hot chicks. He's cool. <laughs> the women loved him. I, I, have right. to, I have to disagree with his 100, you know, he and because I, I was with him, and he, when his age and her age reached 100, he had to change her. And I was with him when he did that. And he actually let go of a great girl that because they got to 100, he says, I can't do it. I have to go. And so as he got older, his girls got younger. And <laughs> yes, I just remember walking into Diggers in Prince Albert. And there's, I'm like, that looks like Don Matthews sitting there. And it was. His wife's dad was the warden of the PA pen, went over, talked to him, and he was the greatest guy. That won't surprise you or anybody else. He didn't mind. So, anyways, no. Jim, thanks. I know you got to prepare for tonight. Keep it rolling, bud. All right. Thanks, Rod. Uh, thanks. The CFL on TSN's Jim Barker with us.